right now on Upfront. Battleground Blitz. This is going to be a tight race until the very end. 16 days to go. The start of in-person early voting 48 hours out. This is a very, very important election. Clap your hands and make some noise. Hundreds of thousands already voting early. The campaign's targeting Wisconsin. Are you concerned about that race? Well, I'm concerned about everything. This Sunday on the campaign trail, our exclusives, Democratic National Committee Chairman Jamie Harrison, Milwaukee Bucks head coach Doc Rivers, and Republican Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. Then, battle for the House. And you run the race like it's competitive. You run all the way through the tape. The fight in Wisconsin's first congressional. Well, I'm certainly encouraging all my people to be there and show up. We're taking the candidates for coffee, including the Green Party, with one direct mission. Maybe this will be a wake up to the Democrats in this state. The race, the national attention, and the new analysis and reporting from J.R. Ross, all just moments away. This is Upfront with Jaron Jordan and political director Matt Smith. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. 16 days to go. Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance at Lambeau Field this morning, and it is another busy week ahead. Former President Barack Obama will campaign with Tim Walls in Madison Tuesday, the start of in-person early voting across Wisconsin. Already more than 305,000 Wisconsin voters have returned their absentee ballots. Former President Donald Trump expected back in Wisconsin as well, amidst a whirlwind of stops in battleground Wisconsin. Good afternoon. 48 hours until in-person early voting is underway. The Harris campaign barnstorming Wisconsin. A bus tour featuring Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers. Thanks, Tony. We love you. And Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Because we got a lot of work to do ahead of us. 20 days out, what's the biggest concern, the biggest challenge for Democrats? Just getting out the vote. I mean, that's why we're doing this. On the final leg, Democratic yeah. National yeah. Committee yeah. Chairman yeah. Jamie Harrison. Yeah. You're here in Wisconsin. How does that underscore the importance of, of this state? Well, the last time we talked, I said battleground Wisconsin, where all of the eyes of the nation were going to be on Wisconsin. And guess what? They are. The state is really, really important, not only in terms of de deciding uh, who wins the presidency, but also who controls the United States Senate. So you're in the battlegrounds. I mean, why, why is this? Why why is the presidential race so close in your mind? Because you know it's just it's a split nation at this point, and it has yeah. been for a while now. So it, things haven't changed. Um, but in the end of the day, I think Kamala Harris is going to win this race, partly because you know. Uh, How so? What's, I, what's the path? I, I, I said it there. In the end of the day, people want more hope than they want fear, right? And that's the difference in the contrast between these two candidates. You listen to Donald Trump rally. Yeah. And it's all fear. They want to make you scared of every single thing. But you go to a Kamala Harris rally and it's hopeful. It's joyful. It's about knowing that the future for the America is bright. Um, and you just got to lean into it. And so the, the, the path is, uh, you know, you got to go through the, the, our blue wall states, right? Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, really, really core. But we have a number of other all alternate paths if that they lose, don't have. If you lose Pennsylvania, for we're example. We're not. <laughs> we're not going to. We're not. And a very, very important election is about to happen. Am I right? Talk back to me. Am I right? The campaign to bring out Milwaukee Bucks head coach Doc Rivers, co-chair of Athletes for Harris, and alongside Senator Tammy Baldwin meeting with black voters in Milwaukee. Rivers with us just after. We're hearing that a lot of black men or more black men are thinking about voting for Trump, staying home, not voting for Harris. What would you tell them in these final days? Well, I don't believe that, number no. one. I think that's a false narrative. I, I think uh, black men will get out to vote in this election, and I do think they'll vote uh, for Harris. I just do. I believe that. Um, but there's a lot out there, and, and, and people do feel disenfranchised. But that's just not now. That's through our lifetime. Um, but. Elections matter, voting matters, and voting for the right candidate matters. You know, people didn't want to vote uh, for Hillary, and then the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade because we didn't vote. Uh, I don't believe that's going to happen. I believe it's going to be a historic turnout. You're back in a state that is a key swing state. Yeah. What is the importance of, of Wisconsin in your mind? Oh, it's key. It's, it's, it's the key holder in a lot of ways. It's amazing how, in some ways, powerful Wisconsin is. I think Wisconsin has a chance to make a statement uh, that is not even about party, uh, it's about country and what's right for this country so this country can keep healing, 
and keep coming together and not separate. Uh, when you go around Wisconsin now, Milwaukee now, from when I went to college, this is a different place. You know, everyone gets along. Every, we got to keep that going. We can't let anyone uh, scare us, and, and we got to stay united. You, Magic Johnson, there are a number of co-chairs for athletes for Harris. Was that yeah. an easy yes? Yeah, that was a yes. You know, it's so funny. I, I've known, I knew uh, President Obama when he was senator. Uh, and I, I worked for him, but not very hard, because I really believe he didn't need, he had enough people. Uh, this is more important. This election is more important. It, it really is. I heard you up there say speaking out can lead to consequences yeah. sometime. What are the what what consequences have, have you faced speaking out? Well, because I'm a public figure. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of hate. Uh, you'd be amazed at some of the texts and some of the DMs I get on Instagram. Uh, what have they said? You know, threatening, um, you know, in word, all kinds of things. But that's just part of it, uh, and you're fine with that. You have to be able to breathe through that and keep speaking the truth and keep speaking what's right. Nothing should deter us. We can't. We just got to keep moving forward. I, I'm sure you've heard people say, coach, stay in your lane. Yeah. Coach basketball to the players, stay in your lane, play basketball. What do you say to those? Well, we do stay in our lane. We play basketball and we coach. Uh, but the person saying that should stay in their lane too then. Then no one should speak if that's true. Uh, I think, as I said on stage, uh, I hate when someone says, I'm not going to vote because I don't want to get political or, you know, I don't like politics. And my answer to that is politics are involved in your everyday decision make. Everything you do, there was a policy that was passed to allow you or not to allow you to do that. And so if it's going to be, affect my life, I want to say. And, and it's the American way is to have a say. That's what freedom means. You know the political climate we're in today, you just referenced it, and, and some of the reaction, yeah, yeah you, you've heard. Uh, I'm curious, what do you tell the players? What do you tell your players? I tell them to speak out. Uh, you know, I don't tell them who to vote for. I never do that. Uh, I tell them to speak out, uh, get involved, uh, let them hear your voice, and feel good about it. Uh, either side, you know, I don't know how anyone's on the other side personally, but that's just my opinion. That doesn't make me right. It, I'm just speaking what I believe. Let's bring in New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, chairwoman of the House Republican Conference in the state campaigning for Donald Trump. Congresswoman, great to see you. Welcome to the show. Great to be here in Wisconsin. Uh, I want to start with something Jamie Harrison just told us, that he said in these final days of the campaign, the Harris campaign is running on hope and the Trump campaign is running on fear. Is that a fair account of the state of the race? No, President Trump is running on his record of economic success, of his record when it came to national security issues, of his record on securing the border versus Kamala Harris's failed record. We have a wide open border. It's impacting every state across the country. We have an economy where hardworking families are struggling, facing the highest rate of inflation in their lifetime. What is the biggest challenge for Republicans in these final two weeks? You know, our focus is making sure people know the importance of voting. This election is going to come down to turn out. Whoever turns out their voters is going to win this election, especially in swing states like Wisconsin. That goes for the presidential, the key Senate races, and also the House races. So I'm here today thanking our volunteers and getting out the message of the importance of voting, and that includes early voting, which is key in Wisconsin. That allows us as Republicans, when we bank those votes early, that allows us to communicate with those that haven't voted yet and undecided voters. In person, early voting in Wisconsin starts Tuesday here. You're a big proponent of getting people out to the getting out to the polls this early vote, uh, especially there in your home state as well. But uh, how has Trump hindered those efforts of getting people out to early vote? He has embraced them. I mean, he has cut videos encouraging people to vote early at virtually every speech he gives. He talks about the importance of voting early. Uh, and he has worked with so many of the Republicans in various states to strengthen election integrity while also making sure that there are legal ways to vote early. Like we have in New York State, we have early in-person voting. That's how I I've voted in previous elections, and the same goes for legal absentee ballots, which we have in certain states across the country as well. So get your vote in. The most important thing in the message from President Trump is bank your vote and vote. Just make sure to get your vote in because it's going to come down to every single vote matters. So that doesn't stop you in your track sometimes when Trump still comes out and says mail-in voting leads, leads to fraud at, at, during his rallies? Well, he is very clear that there needs to be a chain of custody. It needs to be legal mail-in voting. So in the state of New York, for example, that's legal absentee voting. It depends on what state you're from. 
President Trump cares deeply about election integrity. He's very concerned to make sure illegals are not able to vote and tamper with the mail-in ballot process. But again, we're focused on using your legal voting opportunities, whether that is vote in person early or vote by mail early. You summed in uh, uh, Zaki in Washington uh, counties on behalf of, of the campaign. When, when Trump lost the state in 2020, underperformed in some of the suburbs around, uh, uh, around Milwaukee uh, and some critical counties in Green Bay, has the campaign done enough to win back moderates in swing states, uh, including here in Wisconsin? You know, I think they have, and they're really winning independent voters. They are reaching out to all sorts of voters. We are not taking anything for granted. And the polls are moving in our direction, but we cannot stay complacent. The issues are on our side. People care about the economy. They care about the border. They care about our education. I went to a school today, toured, that talked about educational choice and school choice legislation, which has been a success here in Wisconsin, not just supported by Republican families, but by Democrat voters as well and independent voters. So on those issues, President Trump has a tremendous record. It's resonating with people that identify as moderates, even people that identify in some cases as soft Democrats who have felt that today's Democrat Party has left them so far behind. New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik in the state for a few hours hitting all the key battlegrounds. Congresswoman, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Up next, the battle for the first congressional hour coffee with the candidates, Republican Congressman Brian Stile, Democrat Peter Barca, and the Green Party candidate Chester Todd revealing his motives in the race.